Uh, good morning, dear friends. I am Dr. Armen, Professor Armen Asvatsatrian from Yerevan, Armenia. So I'm, for you, I'm Dr. Y, <laughs> because I know this. my name is unpronounceable for you. So, and uh, we continue to talk about uh, our lectures. And today it's a sudden cardiac death in athletes. <coughs> so, an estimated uh, one to three per 100,000 apparently healthy young athletes develop abrupt onset of ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation and die suddenly during exercise. Uh, males are affected up to 10 times more often than females, men than women. Basketball and football players in the United States and soccer players and football, classic football in Europe may be at highest risk. In young adults, sudden cardiac death may, has many causes, but the most common is under, undetected hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, commotio cordis, it's a sudden cardiac, sudden, sudden ventricular tachycardia fibrillation after a blow to the precordium is a risk in athletes with thin compliant chest walls even when no cardiovascular disorder is present. The blow may involve a moderate force projectile, for example basketball, hockey puck, lacrosse ball, or impact with other, another player during a vulnerable phase of myocardial repolarization. Other causes include inherited arrhythmia syndromes, for example, long QT syndrome, Brugada syndrome. Some young athletes die of aortic aneurysm rupture in Marfan syndrome. In, other, in, another, in older athletes, sudden cardiac death is typically caused by coronary artery disease. Occasionally, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy or valvular disease is involved. In other conditions, underlying sudden deaths in athletes, for example, asthma, heart stroke, illicit or performance-enhanced drug-related complications, ventricular tachycardia, or fibrillation is a terminal, not a primary event. Symptoms and signs of those of cardiovascular collapse diagnosis is obvious. Immediate treatment with advanced cardiac life support is successful in less than 20% the percentage may increase as a distribution of community-based automated external defibrillator uh, expands. In fact, studies have demonstrated that the presence of external defibrillator can increase the neurological intact survival neurog neurologically intact survival rates to over uh, 80%, 80, 80, 80%. For survivors, treatment is management of the underlying condition. In some cases, an implanted cardioverter defibrillator may, uh, ICDs, so the ICDs may be, uh, may be required. So causes of sudden cardiovascular death uh, in young athletes is a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, cardiomyopathy, commotio cordis, coronary arteries anomalies, for example, anomalous left main coronary artery origin, left main origin, anomalous right coronary artery origin, coronary arterial hypoplasia, myocarditis required. Uh, sorry, myocardi yeah, myocarditis, ruptured uh, aortic aneurysm, arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia, tunneled left anterior descending coronary artery, aortic stenosis, premature atherosclerotic coronary artery disease, dilated cardiomyopathy, myxomatomous gen degeneration of mitral valve, long QT syndrome, Brugada, syndrome and anterograde and, uh, 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 so wolf parkinson weight syndrome of course wolf parkinson weight syndrome anterograde conduction only of course huh? catecholamine catecholaminergic polymorphic tachycardia right ventricle outflow tract tachycardia coronary vasospasm cardiac sar sarcoidosis cardiac trauma 
ruptured cerebral artery aneurysm. A cardiovascular screening for sports uh, participation. Athletes are commonly screened, screened to identify risk before participation in sports. For example, in the United States, they are reevaluated every two years in high school age or every four years if college age or older. In Europe, screening is repeated every two years regardless of age. Screening recommendation in the United States for college-age young adults as well as for children and adolescents include the following. Medical family and drug history include use of performance enhancing drugs and drugs that predispose to long QT syndrome. Physical examination include blood pressure and supine and standing cardiac auscultation. Selected testing based on findings on history and physical examination. European, uh, European guidelines differ from American guidelines in that uh, screening electrocardiogram is recommended for all children, adolescents and college, college age athletes. Screening for, for other, older adults, older adults means 35 plus, huh? Within, uh, with the risk factors may include incremental symptom leaded exercise testing especially especially if they have been sedentary for a number of years. History and examination are neither sensitive nor specific. False negative and false positive findings are common because prevalence of cardiac disorders in an apparently healthy population is very low. Use of screening ECG or echocardiography would improve disease detection but would uh, produce even more false positive diagnosis and is impractical at a population level. Yeah. Genetic testing for uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy or long QT syndrome is not recommended or even feasible for the screening of athletes. Selected testing. So, athletes with a family history of symptoms of a science of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, long QT syndrome or Marfan syndrome require further evaluation, typically with ECG, echocardiography or both. Confirmation of any of these disorders may produce, pre, uh, sorry, preclude sports participation. Athletes with presyncope or syncope can also be evaluated for anomalous coronary arteries, for example, by cardiac catheterization. In, if ECG reveals Mobis type 2 heart block, complete heart block, two uh, true right bundle branch block or left bundle branch block, or there is a clinical of or electrocardiographic events, evidence, sorry, evidence of supraventricular or ventricular rhythm disorders, a search for cardiac disease is required. If an enlarged aorta is detected on echocardiography or is incidentally, further assessment is needed. So, recommendations. Athletes should be uh, counseled against use of illicit of, of performance enhancing drugs, of course. Huh? Patients with mild or moderate valvular heart disease may participate in vigorous activity. However, pa patients with severe valvular heart disease, particularly of the stenotic variety, should not participate in competitive sports or high-intensity recreational sports. Patients with most structural or <coughs> sorry, arrhythmogenic heart disorders, for example, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, coronary artery uh, anomalies, Arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia should not participate in competitive sports or high-intensity recreational sports. Okay, so key points. Sudden cardiac death during exercise is rare and is most commonly due to hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Younger athletes and coronary artery disease, older athletes. Screen younger participants, children through young adults, with history and physical examination, those with abnormal findings or positive family history typically 
have ECG and or echocardiography. Screen older participants with risk factors, particularly if they have been sedentary for a number of years with history, physical examination, and usually an exercise stress test. So, uh, it's enough concerning sudden cardiac death in athletes. About sudden cardiac death we will talk maybe in another lectures. Uh, that's all concerning uh, this problem in, in athletes, sudden cardiac death in athletes. So don't forget, don't forget, please, uh, to follow and subscribe our channels, our channel, Dr. Y channel. So uh, put on subscribe and put on ring to be in touch with news from our channel. And don't forget, please, to make your donations. How to make your donations? You can make it through YouTube possibilities. Or just, uh, you, you can find this possibility in description of this video, in YouTube or in podcast. See you, my friends, and goodbye.